Lots of little kids say they want to be an astronaut when they grow up, but I was one of the only ones who actually did it. Hi everyone, I'm Marisol from Dallas. Please like and subscribe. Okay, so I wasn't technically an astronaut yet, but I was getting close. I've gone to space camp every summer since I was little. While the other kids were doing basic algebra, I was solving complex calculus equations just like the engineers at NASA. My heroes were Valentina Tereshkova and Sally Ride, two of the first women to go to space. I wanted to follow in her footsteps and inspire other girls one day. My parents thought I was strange for only eating freeze-dried space food, but I didn't care. Maybe I wasn't an astronaut yet, but no one could say I wasn't living the lifestyle. I had to hide the food, though, because my little brother was always chasing our cat around the house and squirting her with space ketchup. Rodrigo! That only works when there's no gravity! My dad didn't approve of my dream to go to space. He wanted me to aim for somewhere more practical, like a courthouse or a hospital. But being a lawyer or a doctor just wasn't my dream. One day at school, I saw some students gathering around the bulletin board. I pushed through to see what they were looking at. It was a flyer for space cadet tryouts? My heart leapt into my throat. This was exactly the opportunity I'd been searching for. The tryouts were this weekend at the Space Center in Houston. Now I just had to convince my dad to let me go. Absolutely not. It's out of the question. But dad, an opportunity like this might only come along once in a lifetime. You need to focus on your studies. I have straight A's. You have chores to do. So if I get all my chores done before the weekend, you'll let me go? I could tell my dad was trying to think of another reason to say no, but I didn't give him a chance. Thanks, Dad! I mowed the lawn, trimmed the hedges, and vacuumed and scrubbed the floors faster than I ever had before. The house was spotless. But every time I told Dad I was finished, he just gave me a longer list of chores. Oh, so annoying! If he thought I was gonna let a little housework stand in my way, he was sorely mistaken. Finally, I'd finished everything. My dad looked up from his newspaper and handed me another piece of paper. Dad, come on! I've done everything you've asked! This is getting ridiculous! Look at what you're holding. It was a bus ticket to Houston! This doesn't mean I approve, but a deal's a deal. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! That Saturday, as the bus approached the Space Center, I watched the launch pad come into view on the horizon. It was incredible! A piece of history right in front of my eyes! And there was Mission Control! Once we got inside, I got into my uniform and glanced around at the other cadets. There were about a hundred of us. Most of them were boys. They looked tough, disciplined, almost like soldiers. But I was tough too, in my own way. I made my way towards one of the girls. Hey, is it okay if I sit here? Go for it. I'm Marisol, Jessa. This place is so cool. I can't believe I'm really here. No offense, but I'm not here to make friends. Sorry, I won't bug you anymore. Just then, an intimidating looking officer approached and a hushed silence fell on the cadets. My name is Commander McLean. I'll be your training officer. Out of everyone in this room, only 10 will make the cut for phase two of training. If you fail, you'll be leaving at noon. That made me a little nervous. It would be so embarrassing if I came all this way just to leave before lunchtime. Of the 10 who make the cut, only one will be chosen for the mission. Here at NASA, we only take the best of the best. And before I knew it, we were completing an obstacle course. A lot of the cadets had an advantage over me because they were taller and stronger. But I was smarter. I noticed on the climbing wall that the ropes were frayed. Most of the cadets grabbed the ropes to scale the wall, but I used the handholds instead. While I climbed, I glanced back to see the ropes break and a bunch of cadets crashed to the mat below. A boy was climbing right beside me and he winked at me. Who did he think he was? If he thought that was going to distract me, he was wrong. I hit the ground running. The other cadets were coming up fast. Whoa, Jessa was way ahead of the rest of us. I pushed myself as hard as I could, and I finished right behind her. Congratulations, you just made it to phase two. I stopped myself from jumping and cheering loudly, but on the inside, I was throwing a party. I glanced around to check out who else made it to phase two. Some really tall and athletic cadets were still here, which wasn't surprising, and the boy who had winked at me. I was so excited and really wanted to chat with Jessa. Or someone, anyway. Here I was, in a room with nine other people who shared my passion for space exploration. But maybe Jessa was right. They were my competitors, and I needed to be serious if I was going to be the top performer. Forget about everyone else and just focus on training Marisol. After lunch, the same boy winked at me again. I could feel myself blushing, but I was annoyed. I'm not here to make friends. 
Okay. Our next training exercises made the obstacle course look like a piece of cake. We had to master all kinds of skills, like working the life support systems, orbital mechanics, and space medicine. Thankfully, all my time practicing calculus equations gave me a huge leg up here. The next exercise was the one I'd been most excited to try, zero gravity training. We floated around the chamber like it was a sea without water. It was amazing. Be aware, your bodies are not yet used to the effects of zero G. Most of you will get space motion sickness. Sure enough, when I looked over at the boy who'd winked at me, his face turned green and he threw up. I didn't mean to, but it made me laugh. I caught the boy's eye and he grinned at me. Jessa was floating around like this was just another walk in the park to her. She was the only one who didn't get sick. During our next break, I decided to explore the Starship Gallery. There were a bunch of spacecraft and even a real moon rock on display. I thought I was alone, but then I noticed the boy checking out the lunar module. It's incredible, isn't it? I'm Nick. It really is. I'm Marisol. It's so wild to actually be here. I've been dreaming of this since I was two. My bedroom is covered in planets and stars and model rockets. I'm embarrassing myself, aren't I? <laughs> Your room sounds a lot like mine. I've been obsessed with space ever since my dad brought me my first telescope when I was little. I think he regrets it because all he talks about now is me becoming a lawyer or a doctor. He probably worries about you. This is a dangerous job. It's not that. He doesn't believe it's a realistic dream. Not for most people, maybe. But he didn't see how impressive you were in training earlier. It's nice to talk to someone who cares about space like I do. I felt Nick's fingertips touch mine. It gave me butterflies. Surrounded by all the spacecraft, in the dark with the little star lights on the wall, it was almost like we were really in space. Nick leaned in to kiss me, but at the last second I turned my head. I'm sorry, I really do want to, but I can't. This is my dream. I can't afford to get distracted. No, I totally get it. I was glad he took it so well. He really did seem like a great guy. Under different circumstances, I would have kissed him in a heartbeat. But this wasn't the time or place. You know this means I'm gonna do my best to beat you, right? I'd expect nothing less. Our break was over. Now it was time for something super cool. The Space Flight Simulator. It was awesome at first. It was so realistic that it was easy to forget we were on the ground. But then, an emergency alarm started to beep. Mission Control, we have a problem. There was an explosion in the service module. It ruptured oxygen tank number two. I redirected power to our primary oxygen tank, but then a second alarm started beeping. Red lights were flashing everywhere. There's a line ruptured in your primary oxygen tank. You're losing oxygen fast. I did my best not to panic. My hands were shaking. Wow, this was intense. All the cadets were scrambling to figure out how to solve the problem. Remember, only one of you will be chosen for the mission, but this is a group exercise. If you can't work together as a team, you won't survive. Jessa and I locked eyes. Marisol, can you calculate how much oxygen we have left? On it. Nick, I need you to shut down all non-critical systems to conserve energy. Copy that. At our current rate, we'll run out of oxygen in 10 hours. That's not enough time to complete our mission. I'm gonna try and bring us in for an emergency landing. All of us got to work, nervous and sweating, but we were in sync. It's too rocky. There's no safe place to land. You got this, Jessa. We believe in you. Even though it was just a simulator, I had to admit, it was scary. What if this happened on a real mission? That's what you're preparing for, Marisol. So if it does, you'll be ready. Suddenly, the emergency signals were silent. We all looked around at each other, breathless. Congratulations, cadets. You've just successfully executed an emergency landing. All of us cheered. I even gave Nick a hug. We really pulled together and overcame the odds. It made me stop seeing the other cadets as my competition. They were good people who wanted the same thing I did. And when one of us succeeded, we all did. Later, I was hanging out in the observation area overlooking the launch pad. The sun was setting outside and it cast a beautiful glow on the shuttle. Mind if I join you? Of course not. I'm sorry if I was rude earlier. The truth is, I was afraid if I opened up, it would make me vulnerable. And it's already hard enough, especially for girls. I know what you mean. You really had my back in the simulator. We're a team. When one of us succeeds, we all do. Friends? Friends. You know, I think you have a really good chance of being chosen. Really? But you're like the best pilot here. I can't do math like you can. Let's make a pact. 
No matter which of us wins, or if neither of us do, we'll still support each other. Deal. The next morning, it was time for the announcement. We gathered around and waited for Commander McLean. I think everyone was too nervous to chat. Finally, the commander approached. All of you did good work here. I want everyone to walk out those doors with their heads held high. But as I said, there can only be one. I tried so hard to keep it together, but I was dying to know who was chosen. Cadet Jessa, congratulations. You're our top performer and you'll be joining our crew for our next mission. I felt all the wind go out of my sails. Don't get me wrong, I was happy for Jessa, but I'd wanted this all my life. I had gotten so close, and now it was out of reach. Still, I told Jessa I'd support her, and I meant it. I gave her a big hug, and we promised to keep in touch. Nick and I exchanged numbers, too. When I got home, I looked around my room. Maybe it was time to grow up. I took down my space stuff and put it in a box. Then I decided to take one last look through my telescope. Orion and the Big Dipper were shimmering in the sky. It was so hard to say goodbye. What are you doing? <laughs> you were right. I should find something more realistic. Please, don't say I told you so. Oh, Marisol. I wasn't right. You were. What? Maybe being an astronaut isn't the most realistic goal, but that doesn't mean it's not achievable. This world needs dreamers. If anyone can make it happen, it's you. From that moment on, I never doubted my path again. I was going to give it my all, no matter what the odds were. And maybe, just maybe, one day I would inspire a little kid, just like my heroes inspired me.